Hey everyone, Katie Evans with the Living 48 Real Estate Team, and we are back for another one of our Mortgage Minute interviews today. And I am super excited to have one of our preferred lenders with us. This again is, of course, Corey Martins. And Corey, we are super happy to have you here with us again today. So thanks for taking the time for us. I really oh, appreciate it. And thank you. I always love being here. I appreciate it. Uh, we love having you guys on. You guys have such great insight. And so just to let everybody know, this is kind of the topic that we're going to be discussing today. Um, we're going to talk about condos versus townhomes, the lending around those, and just some of the, the issues that I'm seeing come up in my business and things that you are a lot more qualified to answer than I am around the lending portion of that. So just so everybody kind of knows, that's a conversation Corey and I are going to be having with you today. Um, so listen in. It may not apply to you now, but it might apply to some of your kids. It might apply to grandkids, uh, but it's a really good conversation to just kind of be on up and up about. All right. So that's the conversation Corey and I are having today. So Corey, um, one of the questions that I have come up quite frequently that I wanted to have you weigh in on is right now with affordability becoming an issue for a lot of buyers, a lot of buyers are switching what they're looking for to start looking at condos and townhomes. Homes. And um, first of all, let's talk about the difference between a condo and a townhome when it comes to lending. So I know for a lot of people, there's not a lot of difference in the actual structure itself, the building, the, the living idea, but there is a difference for lending. So can you just kind of elaborate on that for us? Okay. So the first thing I want to say is that you want to make sure you know which one you're dealing with because you can look at a condo or a townhome or even a single family dwelling and be mistaken as to what it's actually categorized as. Um, I've seen homes that I would have thought was a single family dwelling, but it is uh, uh, zoned as a condo. And now we follow under the condo rules. So, you know, first you always want to check that to make sure you know where it is. And, and like you said, you know, we've kind of got our, our typical uh, ideas of what, you know, a condo is more like, a, like an apartment, I'll call it, whereas your townhome is, we think of it as, you know, a couple of adjoined homes. Right. The big difference between them for lending is going to be, like I said, first we need to make sure because um, what, depending on how it's zoned or what is uh, registered as, is going to determine what we need to qualify it. Uh, because when anyone gets pre-qualified for any sort of mortgage, everyone knows that they have to be pre-qualified. Right. A lot of people don't really think about is that we also have to pre-qualify the home. We've got to qualify right. the home as well. Most homes, we do that with an appraisal. Okay. Well, now when we get into a condo, which is going to be a lot stricter than a town home, we've got to, we've also got to prove that community. Okay. Mm -hmm that community viable? Uh, what, if, what if a road needs to be repaved? Is it financially viable? Can it, can it afford to fix it? If there's structural damage, can, is that community viable? Is it able to repair what it needs to repair? If, uh, if there's a, ten, or a tenant, a homeowner in a condo unit that is really negligent and causes all kinds of problems, is that community able to compensate for it? Is it going to be, or is it going to take the whole community down? Right. Just so like how do you how do you determine that? I know that there are some some ways that, as lenders, you guys determine that up kind of up front. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, I love that you say up front because anyone that's looking to buy a condo, if you will take a you know take an extra probably two days. For uh, and allow us to double to check that condo. If we can do an, a little bit of extra work up front, we can make the whole transaction a lot smoother and right. prevent all kinds of headaches later on. Yeah. Um, now, if you know, different agencies handle this differently. Different uh, programs, different investors handle it differently. Um, there's a few different ways we do it. One is a lot of investors and programs. Well, actually, we've got a list of. Uh, condo complexes that have already been approved. Okay. So there's, look, a, there's like a list of pre-approved. I know yeah. that for FHA loans, they, they have that list. Yeah. And that's for- yeah, and, it, and some of them can be rather extensive. I actually looked one up the other day for a, for a VA loan. Yeah. I think there's about 345 pre-approved complexes. Awesome. 
which is great if you fall in there, but make sure you look at the, uh, the expiration date because those pre-approvals are only good for a year. Right. And then you need to approve it again. Right. In most cases. Yeah. Um, now, if it doesn't do that, then what we do is we're going to have to do what they call a questionnaire. So we're actually going to go through and essentially, you know, with a paper form, interview the, the, uh, the condo HOA. Okay. It, to make sure that they meet the criteria that makes sure that, you know, that the investor's uh, investment is safe as well as your investment in that home. Yeah, so what are, what are just a couple of examples of questions that are on that questionnaire that might um, might keep a somebody from being able to purchase with like, um, yeah, to, to purchase it with anything other than like a conventional with 20% down? So, you know, so, some things that are, that are going to be red flags might be if there's uh, over a certain percentage of the units that are behind on their HOA dues. Mm, okay. Okay, this is, you know, it's a red flag. You might have... Um, it, it, we'll take a look to see if there's any uh, out, uh, outstanding litigation against the complex. Yeah. If they're about to be sued and, and lose their shirts, you don't want to be a part of that. Uh, we're going to take a look to see uh, if there's any one entity that earns a, owns a certain percentage of that complex. You know, if, like if there was an investor that bought up like forty percent yeah. of the, the units to rent them. Yeah, out. If, if they own forty percent, you know, what happens if that investor now declares bankruptcy? everyone goes down with them. So we're going to limit, you know, how much one person can own. And, and there's, there's a lot of criteria that way that that's going to go into it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, one of the problems that we've sort of run against um, with some of our clients is a lot of our clients going in. I mean, we have such great lending programs right now where conventional, we can go in with like three and a half percent, five percent, seven percent, something less than the normal 20 percent. But we run into these um, condos or townhomes where that's not going to cut it, that they need to go in with at least 20% down. Can you kind of explain to us what that means? How do, how do we get there? Do you, do you want, the, the, with condos in general, uh, they're going to have a higher, um, a, a higher bar set. They've got a higher standard to qualify, which also translates to rates and everything else. Right. So you, you can get into it, um, but where, where a lot of that comes from is there's different types of, we're talking about these questionnaires that we give to the, uh, to the HOA complexes to, to do it. And there's kind of a, a, a full one mm -hmm. and light questionnaire. Gotcha. What a big determining factor as to which questionnaire we're going to use is going to be how much down payment, what's the purpose of the purchase? Is it an investment? Is it a vacation home? Is it a primary residence? So a lot of these things are going to play into whether we can do the light one, in which case we could probably pass fairly easily or we're, whether we gotta do in depth. So yeah, if you're going with 5% uh, down, we're gonna have to go in depth and some complexes just will not qualify. If you've got, um, it, it, on a primary residence, usually 10% on the right program, we might be able to start doing it with the light review. Okay. The, the full review. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind if you're considering doing a, a condo townhome purchase is you may actually need to have more of a down payment saved up than you would on a single family residence that is categorized and, and labeled as a single family resident zoning. So Corey, that kind of brings us to another question then that you and I were talking about. Um, why would someone choose to purchase a, count, a, a condo townhome over a single family residence right now. And, and so I know you had your thoughts and I have my thoughts. So we share your thoughts and then I'm gonna share my thoughts. <laughs> so, so, so for, you know, everyone, the, the, the first thing everyone comes up with is, is they think cost because they're, they're a lot less expensive. Right. It's, it's really important to understand your reasoning why. Right. Uh, in a lot of cases, that is true. However, you wanna be very, um, thorough at making sure that that is correct because with condos you're going to expect a, a higher interest rate if you have mortgage insurance you're going to have a higher mortgage insurance rate um, your homeowner's insurance will be cheaper but where the big difference is is very likely that you're going to have much higher uh, homeowners association or condo association fees and if those are really big fees you want to talk with your lender and say okay well you know what these fees are going to cost me three hundred dollars a month what if I put $300 a month more into my mortgage and let's see how much more home you can buy. And all, all of a sudden you might be like, you know what? I like 
this level of home as opposed to a, you know, a cheaper condo, but still with the same monthly payment when you add everything in. Yeah, yeah. I think that's great insight. So here's here are just some of my thoughts on it. Now I've lived in both condos and single family homes, um, purchased and owned both. And I think that, you know, both have a great place and both have very different lifestyle associated with them. So when you're looking at a condo and townhome, this is a great segue for a lot of first time home buyers from that apartment style living where, you know, the landlord takes care of everything. If I get a leak under my sink, I just put in a work order request and they come out and take care of it. Um, so when you move into that condo townhome, all of a sudden the HOA is typically responsible from everything from the studs out, right? So yeah. outdoor landscaping, um, exterior painting in a lot of cases, uh, pest control on the exterior, all that kind of stuff. But you are absolutely going to pay for it in your HOA or condo fees. Um, and so you find those to be higher than normal, even though the purchase price might be less than a single family residence, that HOA fee in a lot of cases is substantially higher. Um, so really what, what I think people ought to be looking at, oh, and here's another thing to, to just keep in mind, when the market goes down, a lot of times it is the condo townhome market that gets hit first as far as losing value. Now, again, there's gonna always be a place for condos and townhomes in our market, but when we have some sort of crazy stuff happen in our real estate market, it is typically the condo townhome market that takes the first initial hit of, of that and, and losing value. So that's, that's something to consider as well. Now, um, what I like to advise my clients to do is to really look at, you know, because again, we look at how much can you get qualified for, and maybe that's, maybe they'll qualify you for this much, but the monthly payment that you're comfortable at is, is more like this much, right? So instead of looking at the actual purchase price or the dollar amount or everything, let's look at the big picture and look at our actual monthly expenditure. So if we take that HOA fee and that, um, you know, the, the different things that it's gonna cost you at the, at the condo townhome level and then translate that into what would that look like on a payment for a single family residence? Well, maybe I don't have that higher um, homeowners association fees or da 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 yeah. fees. What, where, where do we come? Where's our, where's our matching point between the two? And if that price point is one where we can find you something that you'd be happy with, mm -hmm. my suggestion is going to be to go for the single family residence over the condo townhome for the long-term benefits of it. Now there's gonna be lots of people who are like, you know what, I, I need them to take care of the exterior. I just want to take care of the interior. Then you are the perfect candidate for a condo townhome. And we just need to talk about how we get that done. So things to remember would just be things like, hey, you might have higher uh, homeowners insurance. You might have, you know, there's, there's gonna be other things that you're gonna have a little bit higher of, but it's gonna be worth it to you because that's the kind of lifestyle that you're looking for. So there's a lot of conversations to be had around, do I buy a condo townhome or do I buy a single family residence? What does that mean to me financially? What does that mean to me lifestyle? What is that, you know, all those kinds of things. So I think those are, those are really important conversations to have with your lender and with your realtor. Mm -hmm. Right up front at the beginning, let's make sure that we, we get it off the bat because there is nothing that go, that's worse. And I, I've had this happen to take clients out, have them look at a condo that they fall in love with, but they only have three and a half percent saved. And because of the, the development, there's no way we can buy it unless we're either cash or conventional with 20% down. There's, that's just an awful, awful feeling when you find your dream home and you can't buy it. So, so that's that's my, that's my thoughts on it. <laughs> That's honestly, that's a lot of really good advice in there. And Katie, if you get any smarter, you're not going to need me anymore. So, <laughs> um, no, you, that, that, <laughs> you uh, no, that, that, that's a lot of great advice, but yeah, when, when you do speak with your lender, just kind of reiterating what you said, if you're considering a condo, let us know right away, because we're going to look at things entirely differently. Yeah. And we'll tell you what, you know, what we need to watch for and what we don't. And we're going to be a lot more involved and active up front because we want to make sure if you're making an offer on that condo, again, we got to make sure that community qualifies and we don't want to find that out halfway through a deal, especially, you know, after you paid for 
an appraisal or an inspection or anything like that. We want to know that right up front. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Corey, any final thoughts on, on this subject of uh, condo certifications or buying townhomes or condos that we ought to throw in here? Do you know, I think we did a, a great job. Again, I'm just going to, I'm going to reiterate, be, be prepared for extra work up front. Um, you know, if you're, you got that mindset of going, why is this lender asking me for all this stuff up front? Just understand that it's going to make everything so much smoother and be prepared for that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Corey, I just want to thank you for your time again. You are always a wealth of information and I so appreciate you being willing to share that with me and with our clients. And of course, um, you guys know Corey is one of our preferred lenders, so we always are going to recommend you over to him as well. So Corey, how can people best get a hold of you if they need to chat with you? Do you know what? Um, well, I'm going to give you two numbers. I'll give you uh, my office number. Uh, well, normally I'd say come on in and see me in my office, but under the circumstances right now, we aren't taking anyone in our office. Uh, hopefully one day I can see you guys here in, uh, in Chandler. But until then, my office number is 480 344 three, six, four, three. Um, if I'm not in my office, which sometimes is the case right now, also in, in the current environment, you can always reach me on my cell phone and that's four, zero, six, three, one, four, zero, nine, six, two. Awesome. Awesome. And of course, you guys know that I know where to get Corey at any time. So if you forget or didn't write that down fast enough, you can always reach out to me or you can look on our website under our preferred lenders and you will find Corey and all of his contact information there as well. So uh, as always, you can visit the website and that's wwwliving 48 realestate.com. And that's going to get you a wealth of information there. Uh, you can come back and watch this video again under our video blogs. Uh, you'll, you'll find all kinds of great things and great information on that website. So we would invite you there as well. Of course, we would always invite you to join us and visit us on our social media sites. Uh, if you look up Living 48 Real Estate, you will find us on all the different social media platforms. And we would love to connect with you there. So Corey, thank you again. Um, we just so appreciate you and, and all the, the help you give us and our clients. And um, I'm so glad you guys are staying safe and staying healthy over there. So everyone you, out you there well. in virtual world, we want the same for you. Stay safe, stay healthy. And we really appreciate you guys joining us on our video today. We'll catch you on our next one. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Katie.